Many of the women that we studied this past year were well known for their prayer lives and their spiritual practices. St. Gertrude of Novellus is said to have memorized much of scripture. Rhoda Wise, actually from Canton, Ohio, who I'll mention later, practiced many spiritual practices and devotions in her everyday life. Dolores Hope, who we mentioned earlier, um, even though she was famous in the secular world in many ways, she was a person of strong faith and a practicing Catholic. She had a chapel in her home where she frequently asked friends to gather for retreat. She also had a large collection of spiritual books, which she shared with her friends. So just as water flows through the soil and provides refreshment for the plant, so our spirits need to be regularly refreshed through prayer and spiritual practices. We need to allow the spirit to flow through us as we do this. Lastly, we're going to talk about one other requirement of the plant, and that is the sun, God's provision for the plant and God's provision for us. And Terry will share with you about that. So you've got a good strong body and your mind is provided by the soil and um, you've added the water for taking care of your spiritual health. All you'll need to do is have God provide the light. So you'll want to put this in a sunny location in your home and with any luck it may bloom which um, you also can do and bloom and evangelize to other people. Scripture tells us of God's provision. In Psalm 84, 11, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. In Matthew 6, 31-32, Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. In John 15, 16, You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that your Father will give you whatever you ask for him in my name. A man named Father Joseph Esper writes, and I will quote from him, we are completely dependent on God's mercy and grace. We must trust that God wants to save us and that he will give us the resources that we need to cope with life challenges and to achieve our eternal destiny. The saints had a profound awareness of the Lord's presence in their lives, so profound that they didn't seek miraculous confirmation or run after wonders and signs. God meets our spiritual needs just as he promised. He also provides for our physical needs as long as we place our trust in him. If indeed we are trying to do God's work instead of our own, we need not fear the results. The Lord is an expert at solving problems and providing for us in our needs, even to the point of working miracles if need be. The one thing he can't do, however, is force us to trust in him. If we freely choose to do this, we are cooperating with his grace and the results are guaranteed to be wonderful and amazing. In an article in Integrated Catholic, Joni Watson tells us different ways that we can increase our trust in God. She first says to jog your memory. Even in the dark memories, there were blessings. The more we recognize the gifts that God has given us in the past, the more we'll be able to recognize them in the present, even with darkness and doubt threaten our trust. Secondly, she says to immerse prayer life with reminders. We need to be reminded we can trust God. Spiritual reading is a key. When our emotions and heart are telling us one thing, the saints, spiritual writers, and scripture can bring us back to reality. Thirdly, she says to make an act of faith each day. Even when our heart feels weak and unable, our lips can repeat a simple act of faith. Ask him to increase your faith and trust in him. He will happily answer that prayer. One of the Old Testament women that we studied was Hagar. Hagar's story is one of God's provisions. 
If we remember, Hagar was the maidservant of Sarah, Abraham's wife. When Sarah was unable to conceive, she offered Hagar to Abram. Hagar conceived a son, Ishmael. As the story unfolds, Hagar was ended up being sent into the wilderness with her son. She was alone and afraid and called out to God. And I'm taking this information from a website a website called Touching Lives, and it talks about Hagar and says, Yet when she ran away, and when she was sent away, Hagar found God, or rather God found her, speaking through his angels. Hagar trusted God. How could she not? When we trust Christ and our eyes are opened in faith, for the first time we clearly see God. Like Hagar, we cry, I have now seen the one who sees me. God opened Hagar's eyes to his provision right in front of her through the well of water which she used to revive her son. We can ask God to reveal solutions we haven't thought of and to open our eyes to see things that we cannot yet see. God will grow us and strengthen our faith through difficult circumstances. Hagar's story should be a reminder that no matter our circumstances, God provides. His promises endure and he will never fail us. Another woman we studied was Rhoda Wise, who I mentioned before was from Canton, Ohio. Um, we might also touch on her a little bit later when we talk about healing. Briefly, Rhoda was a common, ordinary person who experienced many hardships in her life, including some extreme health challenges. Yet she never gave up. She's known for her unshakable faith and for the resulting miracles in her life and those around her as God provided for her. So just as the sun shines on the plant and stimulates its growth, God shines on us, even on cloudy days. Just as a plant turns and grows toward the sun, we grow toward God as we trust in him. As we conclude part two, there may be some things that you want to reflect on about your own self-care. Feel free to consider, discuss, or journal about these. Then move on to part three when you are ready.